Hi guys, welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel. I'm Dane and today I'm gonna to be taking you through my recipe for a candy cane chocolate Yule log. It's absolutely delicious, it looks stunning and you'd be proud to have this at any centerpiece at your Christmas dinner, a Christmas party, a New Year's party, whatever you like. It is a flourless chocolate sponge filled with a pepperminty whipped cream filling and it's got crushed candy canes inside, a red and white chocolate gold splattered bark on the outside. It looks fabulous, I can't wait to make it for you. And the first thing we need to do is prepare the tin. So I've already got a sheet of greaseproof paper that's a little bit bigger than my tin. This is a nine by 16 inch tin. You don't really need like a Yule log Swiss roll pan, just as long as it has kind of little, um, raised sides like this, you're golden. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut little squares out of the corner of the paper. I'm just gonna spray the tin first with some cake release spray, just so it sticks. You could use butter if you want. This is super easy and handy. And then when you sit the paper inside the tin, because we cut those squares, it sits nice and flush and then you don't get any crinkles in the corners. And then I'm just gonna do a little spray on the top of this as well to help the sponge get off of that paper once it's baked. Now we will move on to the mixture. So I've got five whole egg yolks in here. I split them up into egg yolks and whites, which is in this bowl. And to the egg yolks, I'm going to add 100 grams of caster sugar. And then I'm just gonna use my hand mixer to get that whipping on a high speed until it's nice and thick and pale and fluffy. I would say don't focus on the timing so much of this. I would say it takes like five minutes, but it might take less. You're just looking for that texture that I just described. Really thick and pale. And I'll lift the whisk up when it's done, but this isn't quite done yet. Brilliant, that is ready. When it drops from the whisk, it kind of ribbons back into the mixture. The next thing I'm going to do is incorporate some cocoa powder. I'm gonna sieve that in and I've got 45 grams here and a pinch of salt. Just mix that through until it's a really thick, cocoa-y paste. It will feel a bit mallow-like. So we'll just leave that to one side and then those egg whites that I told you to save earlier on from the yolks, we will just get those whipping in our mixer. I've already cleaned this with some vinegar just to get any excess grease from the bowl. And I'll just start this on a slow speed just to incorporate some bubbles in there. And then I'll turn it up to a high speed and get it whipping until it's nice and frothy, soft peaks. And then I'm going to add 25 grams of caster sugar. This has been whipping for about three minutes now, and the meringue is really stiff like this, and it's such a small amount of sugar that you can just add it all in one go. You don't need to add it in batches like you would if you were making like a French meringue that had double the amount of sugar to egg whites. So all I'm gonna do here with the egg whites is just put about that much of a spoonful into our chocolate mixture and just give it a really thorough mix. You can be quite vigorous with this. We're just slacking in it so it's easier to incorporate the rest of the meringue. Brilliant, this looks way different than it did a minute ago. That is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna incorporate this meringue in two halves just so that we don't knock out, we keep as much air as we can in the meringue. And also I'm gonna use a metal spoon to fold this in because it will cut through <laughs> cut through the mixture and you won't lose as much air. And uh, if you got that reference, I like you a lot. It wasn't, okay. The next step in the recipe is to fold in the meringue. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just going underneath the mixture and then every so often I'm cutting through the middle. There's maybe like the smallest lumps of meringue, but I'd rather have that than knock out all the air and the sponge doesn't rise and it's not nice and fluffy. So this is what it should look like. So I'm just gonna take all of this mixture and to cl as close to the tin as possible, 
pop it on there. Because if you do it from a height, then also we're just gonna knock out all of that air that I keep mentioning that we want to keep. And then just with a cranked palette knife, I'm just gonna go easy and gently spread it out to the sides of the tin. So I already have my oven preheated to 170 degrees Celsius fan, and this is gonna go in for only 10 minutes. You wanna check on the top to see if it springs back. That's it. Doesn't fit in this oven. I can take it to that one. <laughs> Reheat that. <laughs> The sponge is baked in the other oven because it wouldn't fit in this one. And it's nice and springy and it's pulled away from the sides a little bit. That will happen, totally normal. And now what I'm going to do is get ready to roll it up. So I've got a tea towel here and then just another sheet of greaseproof paper. <laughs> another sheet of greaseproof paper that is the same size as the cake. And I'm just gonna dust it a little bit with icing sugar just so that like when it cools, it doesn't stick because it will kind of inevitably sweat a little bit. You want to roll it when it's a tiny bit warm. So this has been out of the oven for about three or four minutes now. And I'm going to put a rack over this to just get it out of the tin. Flip this upside down. And because we greased it well, it should come out. Perfect. Slide this onto the paper and then we will take the paper off from the bottom. Time to roll up the sponge. We want to do it quite nice and tightly, so I'm just going to fold over the tea towel a couple of times just to get an edge on there. And then I'm just going to bring it over the edge and roll it up like so. Great! Now that we've got a chocolate log sponge. It's gonna leave this here to cool down and we will get on with making the ganache that is gonna cover the outside. So the peppermint ganache that's gonna go around the outside, I've got 54% chocolate going into a saucepan, set over a pan of simmering water, and I've got 150 grams of that, and then 75 grams of butter, and 75 grams of double cream. And I'm also going to add peppermint extract. Now this is quite a strong one, it's almost like an oil, so I'm only going to put about an eighth of a teaspoon in there, because it's quite strong. I'm just going to leave this over the saucepan just to melt down and give it a stir every so often. Once the ganache is smooth, you want to take it off of the heat, let it cool down for a bit and then put it in the fridge, stir it every five minutes until it's a smooth, glossy, spreadable consistency. My ganache is cooling in the fridge, the sponge is rolled and I didn't tell you earlier that it's very important that you roll the sponge when it's a little bit warm and you keep it there because if you roll it whilst it's cold, it might have a tendency to crack and you're going to cover those cracks up anyway, but when you cut into it, then you'll just see a cracked outer sponge and we want it to be nice and seamless. So the next step is preparing the decoration on the outside. It's very, very simple. I've just melted 150 grams of white chocolate in the microwave and I'm just gonna split it into another bowl, half in there, because we're gonna color this white and red. So I've got this color mill coloring. These are great for this type of thing because they're liquid, they incorporate into chocolate really, really easily. You just wanna give them a good shake before you pour it into the chocolate, mix it through and keep on adding until you're happy with the vibrancy of the color. I've colored both of my chocolates and here I've just got an upturned tray with a silpat mat. It's like a silicone mat on top. And all I'm gonna do with my chocolates, you can go whichever way you want with this. But I'm just gonna take a little bit on my spatula and just put it diagonally on the tray and alternate that with the red and the white. Carry on going until you've used all of the chocolate. It might not look like a lot, but we're gonna spread it out, so don't worry. Then I'm just gonna take an offset palette knife and just spread out the chocolate. You can swirl it a little bit more if you like, but I'm gonna keep it like this so that I keep the nice stripes that I'll show you what it shall look like underneath in a moment. Once you spread out all the chocolate on your mat, I'm gonna lift it up so you can see what it will look like. Cause it looks like a mess right now. But when I lift it up, ta-da! 
It's still got that kind of stripy pattern, but at the edge it's kind of marbled a little bit. So it's abstract. You can swirl it more if you like, but I'm gonna leave it like that and I'm just gonna go pop it in the fridge to set for about 15, 20 minutes, just until it's rock hard, and then we'll peel it off and finish this, because I'm not quite done with it yet. I've got a chocolate bark that I made earlier and I'm just gonna peel it off of the mat. This is why these mats are so good, because they're really non-stick. And just look at that. That looks great. And I can break it in half, because we're gonna break it up anyway. That looks absolutely fabulous. And the colors are nice and vibrant because we used the color mill colorings. I'm just gonna splat it gold. I love anything gold. And I've got this, um, gold luster powder from Deco Relief. This one is really, really good because it's like a true gold. It's not kind of a yellowy gold or a coppery gold. So with this, all I'm gonna do is take quite a big spoonful, pop it in this little dish, and then I've just got some vodka here and I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time until I create this runny liquid with the powder. But if you didn't want to use alcohol, you can use water, it'll just take a little bit longer to dry. And then just liberally coat the brush and you can sort of splat it at the chocolate and also just use your finger to flick back and forth the bristles to get the gold pigment onto the chocolate. I'm just gonna pop this back into the fridge until we need it and then I'm gonna whip the cream fill the roll and then we will decorate. So I'm just whipping up the peppermint cream and all I did to make this was, I put 180 grams of double cream into this bowl, two tablespoons of icing sugar, a dash of vanilla extract and a quarter teaspoon of peppermint extract and then just whipped it until it was soft peaks. So you don't want to over whip the cream because when we spread it out onto the chocolate sponge, it's going to start to thicken slightly anyway. So you don't want to overwork it at this stage. This is what it should be like. It's nice and floppy, it's still glossy. There we go. <laughs> so now I've got the sponge that we rolled up earlier. Because we rolled it whilst it was still a bit warm, it hasn't cracked, it's kept its shape. It's still nice and moist and sticky as well. Pop all of the cream onto here in the middle. And then again, just using my cranked palette knife, I'm just gonna spread it out to the edges, leaving about a centimeter and a half gap. I crushed up about six mini red and white candy canes, left them quite chunky, and I'm just gonna sprinkle these all over the cream. And then like we did before, I'm just gonna roll up the Yule Log nice and tightly to get that signature swirl. I'm gonna pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes, bring it back, and I'm just gonna slice off a third of the Yule Log to make that classic Yule Log shape. I've already whipped my ganache from earlier and I just did that with a hand mixer. It just lightens it a lot in color, lightens it in texture, and also it yields a lot more and it's easier to spread on the Yule Log. So all I'm gonna do is take my cranked palette knife and I didn't stick this down onto the board. I've just got this nice marbly board. You can present it on whatever you like. I didn't stick it down because the ice and sugar makes the sponge quite sticky. So it's pretty firm on that already. It's gonna grab a dollop of my ganache and start spreading it liberally over the Yule log using a back and forth motion with the cranked palette knife, making sure that you go all the way to the base of the log. Ideally, you wanna cover up all three ends of the log with the ganache. I just left the cut end open just so that I could show you how pretty it is. But keep going until you've used all of the ganache. This quantity is just enough. So you'll see why I said to whip it because it's so much more easy to spread. Grab back your chocolate bark and begin to break it up in varying sizes and then just place it on the chocolate ganache in different angles. You want it to look kind of jagged. Just make sure that when you place the chocolate at the bottom of the log, it touches the board so that there's no chocolate showing. The ganache might begin to set a little bit, so just grab a blowtorch in between then just to soften the ganache. Keep on going until you've covered the whole Yule log. last piece. I think it looks spectacular and I can't wait to taste it as well. There we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a tight swirl. <laughs> Pop it on the plate. Mm. 
So, so good. And the crunch from the candy canes, they haven't softened. Brilliant. It's just pepperminty enough. You don't want to put too much in. It's nice and fresh, chocolatey. It's absolutely stunning. And I will be making this again. If you fancy a candy cane peppermint yule log for Christmas, I've just given you the recipe. All you've got to do is watch this video back again. Get your tins out, get your ingredients out, pop the oven on. Make sure your tin fits in the oven and um, get baking. And I cannot wait to see your bakes. Every time you tag us, I am just flabbergasted. It's incredible that you guys make all of these lovely things, the recipes that we give to you, and I can't wait to see you make this one. But don't forget that you can also join our bake club, patreon.com forward slash cupcake gemma, because in January, we're gonna be doing a live bake along the first of its kind. And I'm so excited, I'm so excited. So make sure you sign up to there so that you can get notifications. We'll, in, we'll obviously advertise it on Instagram, but you can only view it on the Patreon. It's only for Bake Club members, so make sure you're signed up in time. And also, it's a great birthday gift. If you wanna get a subscription for someone, there you go, it's an easy win. Cupcake Gemma is celebrating its 10th birthday. <laughs> The birthday has already been, but we're celebrating in February. Yes, <laughs> we're celebrating in February. So we'll be doing a little countdown with videos, looking back at past videos and like, reacting to them, and also giving a nod to some of our early videos and revamping them. So um, make sure you keep up with that. You have to click subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time we upload. And we'll see you soon. Keep baking. Yes! Come and have some! I'm dressed as a candy cane! <laughs> Brilliant. Mmm. Good luck, Dave. Thank you. Told you.